Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I'm glad you joined us today because we're in the middle of an amazing series of studies on the Holy Spirit and spirituality. Our topic today, the personality of the Holy Spirit. There's all kinds of ideas about the Holy Spirit or no personality at all. What does the Bible say? It's going to be an exciting study. And we have one of our team who will be teaching Hope Sabbath School. I'll tell you a little more about that in just a minute. But welcome to Hope Sabbath School and welcome to our team. Great to be together, isn't it? And I'm so excited today because one of our team, Jason, going to be teaching Hope Sabbath School and we're excited Jason because this is a vitally important topic and we're glad that you're here with us and we always are so happy to hear from you. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org and uh, here's one from Enrique in Brazil. I've noticed we're getting more and more emails from South America. Enrique says where I live there isn't an English Sabbath School but I have a dream to speak English fluently. I'd like to thank you because I watch Hope Sabbath School every week and I'm learning a lot about Jesus and I improve my English too. So that's a double win, isn't it? Especially learning more about Jesus. Well, Enrique, we're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School and God will bless you. He's probably going to send you as a missionary to North America or somewhere that really needs Jesus. Here's a note from Michael Michael's from Ghana. Anyone from Ghana? Wave, Gloria. Uh, Do you claim Ghanaian? Oh, your father's from Ghana, Joshua. Okay. Well, we just get, let's get a shot. We want to see you wave now. Wave to Michael and Gloria. You wave to Michael too. But, but I have to tell you, he's a Ghanaian on the move. Just like you are right sitting here. He's in Germany. And Michael writes, he says, I want to thank the Hope Sabbath School team for the great job which inspires all of us who take part. I'm at the Hamburg Ghanaian Church in Hamburg, Germany. I started watching Hope Sabbath School, and it really helps me with my studies and growing in Christ. Amen? Amen. My request is if Hope Sabbath School could be held, translated in other languages. Well, I have good news for you, Michael. You pray for us. The good news is we've started offering closed captioning in English, but we have a dream that that closed captioning in English, which can help people who are hearing impaired and English second language, could also be made available in all other languages around the world, maybe including, what are some, what's the languages in, huh? Gee, I can't even say it, Gloria, but I tried to get it right. <laughs> so isn't that amazing? We can have it in all these different languages. So will you pray with us? We believe the gospel of the kingdom about Jesus and God's love for us is going to go to the whole world, and then Jesus will come back. Here's a note from Sean in Florida in the United States. Anybody from Florida? Oh, oh. Stephanie's from Florida. Well, I'm sure Sean would appreciate a wave from you. He says, I have struggled with addiction for 23 years and I was blessed with a restoration center where I found God. Amen. And I turned my life over to him. Amen. I've been, since I've been trying to fill myself up with good things. And this tells you a little about his past. He says, Hope Sabbath School rocks. (laughs) Well, that's, for those of you from another part of the world, that's a way of saying Hope Sabbath School is really good. You guys are giving Jesus a high five. Well, that's another (laughs) colloquial expression. I think that's saying that Jesus finds joy in what's happening with Hope Sabbath School. Thank you. You lift me up. Well, Sean, we're glad all the way from Florida. You're part of Hope Sabbath School. And God is obviously working by his spirit and transforming your heart. We're so thankful for that. One last note from Jerry and I'm guessing Dineke, D-I-N-E-K-E, Dineke. They are from Tasmania. Where's Tasmania? That's an island off the south coast of the great continent of Australia, right? And they write and say, Dear Hope Sabbath School team, we are not Seventh-day Adventists, but we keep the Sabbath day of rest. Since finding you online... We download Hope Sabbath School every week. In fact, we follow the study daily. We cannot wait for you to unpack the Bible study for the next Sabbath. 
the input from the rest of the team is very rewarding, helps us also to see things from a different angle and perspective as the Holy Spirit guides. Our prayer is that this ministry will continue to reach people around the world, no matter what denomination they are, and that others will be blessed and encouraged to follow Jesus as their own personal Savior. Amen? Amen. God bless you, your families and your ministries. Well, Jerry and Dineke, I hope you'll send me an email. Tell me how to say that name correctly. But we're just delighted to see Hope Sabbath School members in the beautiful island of Tasmania and to know that Christians around the world are seeking for a closer understanding of the Word of God and a closer relationship with Jesus. Right now, we're going to sing a scripture song. It's... uh, taken from Galatians chapter 5. If you've been joining us for this series on the Holy Spirit, you've already learned it. You can download the MP3 file and the sheet music from hopetv.org slash hopess, our website. But I know many of you learned it, so let's sing it together. The Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. The fruit of the Spirit. Well, I am excited about the study today on the personality of the Holy Spirit. And Jason, I'm excited that you're going to teach the study. So why don't you lead us in prayer and let's see what the Word of God has to tell us today. Amen. Please bow your heads with me as I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we open your Word, Lord, we embark on a topic that Some people or many of us are confused about, even those of us who have studied your word for many years. Lord, understanding more about who you are, your character, the personality of the Holy Spirit is something that we can only come to understand by knowing you and your word and having a relationship with you. So Lord, please show us today and help us to understand new insights into this topic. We ask this all in your precious and your holy name, Amen. 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 The topic, as we said, is the personality of the Holy Spirit. And so before we actually go to the word, I want us to sort of think a little bit about what words, what phrases, what ideas come to mind. When you hear, hear the words personality and Holy Spirit, the words or phrases, what things come to mind when you hear those words, you hear those phrases? personality and holy spirit does anyone have an idea of what comes to their mind joshua powerful powerful all right well, when i hear the personality i think of a person and we all have different personalities yes different we ways. do and so you think of a very personal person like some people are more extroverted some people are more introverted <laughs> exactly you know or like they're they're very much a part of people and, and anyone else uh nancy yes well, in the King James Version, it says that it's the Holy Ghost. And so some people may think, the ghost, what does that have to do with uh, the Spirit of God? And so, yeah. So the idea of the personality of a ghost almost. So 
as you can see, this could be a topic that could be very confusing, and uh, a lot of people could get some funny ideas. And so we have these ideas about personality and Holy Spirit. Uh, what should we do whenever we have any ideas that we're not clear about? Where should we go? Go to the Bible. Go to the Bible. Go to the Word of God. And so that is where we are going to go right now. We're going to go to the words of Jesus in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 18. And Stephanie, if you could start us out here, let's see what Jesus says when he gives us a little bit of an introduction into the Holy Spirit, this personality about them. Stephanie, John chapter 14, verses 15 through 18. All right, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Now, there's a lot in those verses that we can unpack. But before we even get into this idea of the Spirit, I like sort of verse 15, which tells us uh, who, who Jesus is speaking to. What is, who, who, who is he talking to and what is this command that he's giving to us? He's giving us this command to love and to keep his commandments. Now, who is he saying this to? Is he saying this to just anyone? His disciples. His disciples, yes. And uh, his disciples, and that also applies, you could say, to us, the offspring yeah. of the disciples, us, yes, right, the Christian right. church, those who are believers in him. And so this is something Jesus is telling us about the Holy Spirit. But he begins by saying, uh, first of all, I'm giving this to those of you who are believers so that you can understand who I am, what my ministry is, uh, what my witness is. And then he introduces us to this new individual and how does he describe this individual a comforter another comforter no. another comforter and uh helper. someone helper. here uh has an understanding of the greek because uh the greek word here is alos and alos it, it it means numerically distinct so they're different numbers and yet it's of the same character so there's something about it that is same but different and, and there's another Greek word, heteros, which could have been used, which means different. Mm -hmm. so, so this is same character, but distinct. Mm -hmm. And I, that, that's, to me, I mean, tells me so much because the more I learn about the character of Jesus, because the other helper, if I understand correctly, 1 John 2, verse 1, is, is Jesus. He's, he's saying, in essence, an amazing thing. He's sending someone mm. like me. Mm -hmm. Right. So the character of Jesus and the character of the Holy Spirit, they're, they're distinct, but they're of, of one purpose. Yes, and we, and we get that idea also in verse 16 because Jesus is saying, uh, he'll abide with you forever. What has Jesus been doing with the disciples at this time? He's been abiding with them, and he even says in other places, abide with me as I and you. And so now he's saying, this is how I can abide with you forever, bringing to you this person, this another comfort of the Holy Spirit. Kyle. No, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm not a Greek scholar, so I'm not going to even try, but parakletos, I think, is the word for comforter. Am I right? Parakletos, Looking to you. Right. Yep. Yes, so, okay. Yep. And I think para means come alongside. Yep. And I like that picture because it's like, it's like a person who comes alongside you mm -hmm. to strengthen you and comfort you. It's a very personal picture mm -hmm. of, of like Jesus, or the Holy Spirit coming right alongside to help us through the Christian walk. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Jason, if I, could, if I could read one text, I think it's really important in 1 John 2 and verse 1. Yes. Because I grew up hearing this verse, but, but you used the word parakletos, Kyle. Uh -huh. That's the same word that's used here, translated advocate. Oh, okay. It's the same word. So I'm reading uh, from the New King James Version from 1 John 2 verse 1. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins... We have an advocate, that's Parakletos, mm. with the Father. But then it tells us who that Parakletos is, mm. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Okay. So that's why he uses in, in, in John 14, another, another, because he is the first and the Holy Spirit is another comforter. Okay. Wow. Wow. 
And that's where we get this idea of the helper. And uh, what are some of these things that this helper does that we, we see in, in the verses here? And uh, one of the places, let's go next, is to the next chapter, John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. Uh, Alex, if you could read that for us, John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27, we're going to look through and we're going to see how Jesus describes this parakletos, this other, another helper, comforter, uh, what he does. So, Alex, uh, read for us those verses, please. Sure, and I'll be reading from the King James Version today. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. All right, so uh, what do we see there? What is, what is Jesus described uh, this helper as doing? Testifying. 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 And, yes, Trisha Lee. The same thing that he did, right? So he said, I don't come to speak my own words. I come to testify of the Father. And similarly, the Holy Spirit is not seeking to uh, uplift himself, but is pointing to Christ, who's pointing to the Father. So it's this Amen. very this humble, uh, this humble attitude of always pointing back to the Father. Amen. I think it's a good point that Jesus also said, I came from the Father, mm -hmm. but, but he's not the Father. Mm -hmm. They're distinct, and yet they are one. He said, yes. you've seen me, you've seen the Father, and the Father and I are one. So there's this, there's this mystery, mm. but, but like you said, numerically distinct, mm. but of the same character, another Another helper, another comfort is coming. Mm, yeah. And these three, they all testify of one another. As Trisha Lee uh, pointed out, the Holy Spirit testifies of the Son and, uh, and vice versa. So they're all sort of in a, this relational component together, which is another interesting point and in personality because personality uh, very much relates to relations and a personality is often how you relate to others. And so we see this relational component here that Jesus is speaking of. And let's go on to the next chapter in John, because Jesus, again, he, he speaks quite a bit here about the Holy Spirit and tells us a little bit more. Uh, John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Nicole, if you could read that for us, we're going to see what Jesus declares even more in John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14 about this other comforter, another comforter, this, the Holy Spirit. Sure. So John 16, verses 13 and 14, I'm reading from the New International Version, and it says, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. So whose authority is the Spirit speaking in? God. 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 Christ, yes. Christ so Lord. we have this, this understanding that the, the, uh, God is this relational component and the Holy Spirit it doesn't have his own authority. It's somehow it's part of this relational aspect with the Son here because this is Jesus uh, speaking and talking about the Spirit of truth doesn't speak on his authority and it doesn't say, Jason, that he doesn't have any authority. Right, exactly. He's just speaking on his own authority. Yes. Actually, he's, he's pointing to Jesus and the authority yes. of Jesus. Yes. Amen. They all have authority, but this authority, it seems to be some kind of uh, relational component that continues and how it goes back and forth between them. And that's why Jesus is saying here, uh, he doesn't speak on his own authority because what is his purpose? His purpose is in revealing more about who Jesus is. I want to make a point. Yes, Jason. Trisha Lee. I think anyone that uh, works in an organization where you have multiple leaders or, or uh, hierarchy and management, you've had those instances where you're confused. You get one direction or directive <laughs> from one boss, and then someone goes on vacation, and then the assistant or the deputy says something different, and then you're trying to figure out, well, who are we listening to or who's... Who, who's really in charge? Was it the first thing we heard or the second thing we heard? And so I appreciate here that, as you mentioned, Pastor, that everyone has authority here in, in, in the Godhead, but that it's very clear as to the Spirit is testifying to Christ, and then Christ says, well, I'm only testifying of things I got from the Father. And so it's very clear. We don't have to be confused that the Father told us one thing, and then Christ came and showed us something different. And now the Spirit's moving me to do something completely different. And so I think it's wonderful that we don't have to 
to be confused. They're all working together mm -hmm. to just help us see a very different view of the same purpose that God has for us. And that's a perfect example. We have, we have this heavenly leadership, but unlike our earthly leadership, mm. they're perfect and they're in <laughs> unity. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Which is not something that we have all the time in, in our earthly leadership. That's so true. you have leadership, but it's perfect in mission and purpose, and it's united. Amen. 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 That's beautiful. And we get a really neat picture of this unity in Matthew. Uh, right towards the end of Jesus' ministry, he sort of gives a reference to this unity uh, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Jamie, if you could read that for us. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. We get this beautiful picture of how this unity operates. Sure. The New Living Translation says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Now we all heard there, baptizing them in who? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You have the perfect three the Trinity, the unity right there referenced. And what is the purpose of that? What, 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 is, what does the verse say? Why, why are we baptizing them? What, what are they to go out and do? Disciple. Make, Make disciples. disciples. So this mm -hmm. perfect unity is all about witness and mission and revealing the character of God, yes. that three in one, to the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, some people have had an understanding where they think of the Holy Spirit, and we have mentioned this earlier, as sort of not so much a, a being, but rather this force uh, that's not really so personal. It's impersonal, doesn't, not very relational. But when you look through these verses, is that what you see here? Definitely not. Certainly not from Jesus. Uh, yes. Jesus was very much of a person, uh, and he says, I'm going to ask the Father, he's going to send someone like me. Hmm. Uh, so much are, are the Holy Spirit and Jesus in harmony that he says, I will come to you, which mm. is kind of a mystery. Right. And, and even the Spirit is called the Spirit of Christ. Mm. And yet the Holy Spirit would be the first to say, I am not Jesus. I am not the incarnate Son mm. of God. Mm -hmm. But there is this, there's this unity that is supernatural. Yes. Yes. It's beyond us. Yes. It's quite wonderful. Amen. 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 And through some of those verses, we see some behaviors and some examples uh, that do not seem like uh, the actions of an impersonal force. And we read through the verses. Are there any sort of actions that you guys saw in those verses? Uh, what was some? Adrian, you're nodding your head. Yeah, one that one stood out to me was where it says that the Holy Spirit would testify of Jesus. Mm -hmm. An impersonal force can't testify because that requires mm -hmm. speaking, mm -hmm. and impersonal forces don't speak. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, for t testify, it's often a, a legal term. And so when you want something or someone to testify, you have to actually have them come in and say or show what they have seen. Yeah. And so we have that right here. The Holy Spirit is testifying. Trisha Lee. I think about the a aspect of being a comforter. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, it's hard to comfort someone from a distance. I mean, sometimes you can't by the phone, but to comfort someone, you have to just be there and you yeah. touch them and you're close to them. And I, I appreciate that aspect of, of, of the Holy Spirit's personality in comforting us. And, you know, it reinforces an important point, Jason. If you just read one text, like, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you could say, well, it, that's just like electricity or something. Mm -hmm. But we, we should look at the whole counsel of God. Yes. And as we do that, we see very clearly that he's a person and a divine person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kyle. And just, I think it was mentioned in a previous study that it when it said bap we baptize in the, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, not the names. So it's not three names for the same God. It's the name of these three distinct personal beings. And, and so that is another indication that the Holy Spirit is his own person. Just like Jesus is, just like God the Father. Gloria. Yes, I want to say that um, I think it all hinges on the relationship we have with the Holy Spirit because when Jesus was describing the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit would do for us, he's talking on a personal level because he's one with the Holy Spirit. And so when we read the text, some of the things we identify with because that's the, the, 
the experience we have with the Holy Spirit. Others we don't identify with because we haven't yet gotten there or haven't reached a situation where mm. the Holy Spirit will convince us or ask us to testify. So it's just having that relationship with the Holy Spirit in order to be able to speak of the Holy Spirit or be able to testify of the Holy Spirit in the way that we read from Scripture. Mm. And that's an important point. So we understand the Holy Spirit at the level of which we've had a relationship and an experience. And some people may be newer in their walk and they may not have had that same length of time, that same depth of experience, but as they grow, as they read, as they encounter God more, they will have a better understanding of the Holy Spirit and his personality. Amen. 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 Now, there are a lot of places in Scripture, and I think it's good for us to look at several of these that really magnify the personal aspects of the Holy Spirit. So we can see who the Holy Spirit is, uh, what he does, how he acts. And one of the first places we like to go to, uh, Paul, both the Old Testament and the New Testament write on this, but Paul particularly writes a lot. And the book of Romans. In chapter 8, he gets into this, uh, this understanding about some of the personal aspects of the Holy Spirit. And Trisha Lee, if you could read for us Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 16, and then also read for us verse 27. We're getting here, we're now focusing on these personal aspects of who the Holy Spirit is and how he interacts with us. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Verse 27. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Hmm. So what do we see there? What, what, what part of personality do we see from the Holy Spirit? A leader. Eric? A leader. A leader? Yeah. All Let's right. say we'll be led by the Spirit of God. Being led by the Spirit of God. In... I see a personal interest. Yeah. It says he intercedes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the saints. So again, he has a relationship. He's inviting us into a relationship. And by his action, he's saying, I love you like the Father loves you and the Son loves you. And I'm, I'm interceding on your behalf. And Yes, Joshua. And also, um, just to add to that, it says that he intercedes, but only according to the will of God. Mm. So the Spirit will not intercede for you if it is not the will of God mm. you see so I know that previous in a previous lesson we discussed the idea of someone saying oh the spirit told me that I should do this well if that's not according to the will of God the spirit would never tell you to do that mm -hmm. yes yeah, so it's again this unity of purpose mm -hmm. unity of focus yeah. Trisha I, like, Lee. I like where it mentions the spirit of adoption and it, oh, sorry, Kyle, were you going to say that? <laughs> okay. The spirit, yeah, I just, I just thinking about orphans, yes. right? I mean, it's, it is the adoptive parents that go looking for a child at the amen, orphanage. Amen. It's a loving um, uh, act to go find a child that needs a parent. And, you know, we were lost in our sins. We didn't even know where to turn. And here's the spirit and, 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 and in concert with the son and the father looking for us, calling us children and yes. welcoming us. And if that's not personal, I don't know what else is. Yeah. Yeah. Nicole. Well, I want to go back to the interceding because the verse before 27, which is 26, talks about even though we pray, we may not even pray what we're supposed to be praying or we ought to say. He translates for us. So if that's not personal, I mean, someone who's coming to explain what you're trying to say, there's nothing else. So we have a translator. We have an adoptive father. We have interceding. All of these are very active type verbs yeah. that you would not, that an impersonal force does not do. These are relations of a personal being. And now let's, let's move on to another verse. I really, oh, Na Nancy, you say something real quick here. Sorry. So I'm hearing all these verses and I see how he's such a personal um, God and, and he does all these wonderful things for us. But um, I guess as an artist, I, I would say if I were going to draw the Holy Spirit, how, what would he look like? I mean, it, does he have a face? Can he hold my hand? Can he, you know, so I guess that's part of the humanity um, in us is, well, what, what do they actually, what does it look like? You know, mm -hmm. Jesus, I know, came, you know, in the flesh and I could, you know, and he held us and he, yes. you know, 
But when I think of the Father and the Holy Spirit, it's just kind of a mystery to me as to what the actual physicality of but God we, is. We might say the same thing, Nancy, about the Son. Mm -hmm. But the Son, to reveal Emmanuel, God with us, came right. into right, humanity right, right. in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. So that not only would we know that the Son loves us, but the Father and the Spirit love us too. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, so Amen. that's the gift of the incarnation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. All right, uh, Romans 15, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And uh, Samiso, if you want to read that for us, we're going to look at another uh, quick aspect here of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, verse 30, reading from the New International Version. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. What word was associated there with the Spirit? Love. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Love. That's one of the most personal emotions that can be shown. And we have here that the Spirit has love. Let's continue on. Uh, we're going quickly here through the verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. And uh, Gloria, if you could read that for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. We're looking a little more about the personal aspects of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Amen. Amen. All right, so we have there a searching, deep things. This can be psychological, this can be intellectual. So we understand God better through the Spirit, including the deep things. Mm -hmm. Again, something an impersonal force would not do. And uh, now let's go to some, uh, some sort of biblical stories. We've looked at them in a previous lesson, but in the book of Acts, there's this uh, story of uh, Ananias and Sapphira, and there's a, a sad situation where there's some deception involved. But we, it's, it's interesting to look at some of the language there. Um, Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and verse 9. And Adrian, if you could read that for us, Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 9. Listen to the language of how it's described in relationship to the Spirit. Sure. I'll be reading from the King James Version. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? And verse 9. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold... The feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. So we have there lying to the Holy Spirit. Um, the version there said tempted or tested. Mm -hmm. Basically that you can actually engage in some sort of behavioral way with the Holy Spirit. Something you wouldn't be able to do with an impersonal force. Mm -hmm. And then I really like this quick verse. Acts chapter 8 verse 29. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Nancy, if you want to read that for us, Acts chapter 8, verse 29. What does the Spirit do in this verse? Okay. And it reads, I'm reading from the New King James Version. The then the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. Did you guys hear there? What did the Spirit do? He spoke. Spoke to Philip. Spoke, yes. Can an impersonal force speak? Mm. No. no. It's a personal being. Speaking, language, communication is a very personal aspect. Mm. And we have there the Spirit speaking. Um, and then there's other verses too. Uh, for the sake of time, we won't go through every single one. Uh, but there's an interesting part. Another uh, verse is Acts chapter 28, verse 25. Mm. Because so far, all these verses have been from the New Testament. But we know that the Spirit is not just the New Testament. God is the God of the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. So Acts chapter 28, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Kyle, if you could read that for us. Uh, what do we have here about the Spirit? Okay, Acts 28, 25. And I'm reading from New King James Version. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers. I see. So what is the Spirit doing here? Speaking. Speaking, Speaking, to, our Speaking, to, our Speaking to our fathers. And uh, which prophet were we referencing? Isaiah. 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 And Isaiah is Old Testament prophet. This right. is about 700 years before. So we can see here the Holy Spirit is speaking through the prophets of old as well as in that present time. 
So you have, you have this understanding, this personal being in the Old Testament and the New Testament speaking to people, prophets and all of that. And uh, I like uh, a few other verses that really uh, talk about the role of the Holy Spirit. One in particular is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. And uh, Stephanie, if you could read that for us, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. We're looking here about the Spirit and the personal aspects of the Spirit. What is the Spirit doing here, Stephanie, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Mm. Mm. What is the Spirit doing here? Distributing. 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 Gifts. Yes. Gifts, yes. So, and these are the spiritual gifts. These are uh, uh, special blessings, you could say, that uh, God has equipped people to fulfill his work. And who's the one doing it? The Spirit. Yeah. The Spirit from God not an impersonal being at all. And distributing is a very active word. So we can see here, I mean, if someone distributes something to you, gives you something, uh, you would consider them some kind of being, right? Some, Mm -hmm. not just a force. We don't really have forces that give things. I mean, we might see the effect of them, but if you actually get some kind of gift, you have a relationship with that person. And it's a tailored gift. It's a personalized right. gift. Yes. It's not just the same gift to everyone. Like, you know, line up and you all get the same thing because the Spirit knows us and searches the hidden things of our hearts. He knows exactly what you need and exactly what I need, and He gives it to us. And that's a neat, important point. I think of, you know, birthdays or Christmas, different holiday celebrations. Uh, and I know for me and maybe for you, when you got a gift that you really appreciated, it was for you. It meant so much more than if someone just, you know, gave all of you the same gift. I mean, it's nice, you know, like say when you all get some amount of money. Yeah. But then when you get a gift that was thought about for you yes. and someone went that far, that means something more, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's Trisha Lee's point about it's personalized. It's, it's tailored to you. Yes. And this is God, God. We've read in previous lessons, other verses, how God has known us. Uh, before we were formed. And so God knows what gifts to give to us. Amen. The Spirit knows what gifts to give to us. Amen. And we see that here. Um, and then now sort of to show that the Spirit, it's not just all the positive emotions. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And Gloria, if you could read that for us. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. There's another uh, aspect of the Holy Spirit here that we see. And uh, what, is, what is the spirit here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30? Oh, I think... And uh, as, as, we, as we look at this, again, we're looking at different aspects of the Holy Spirit. Yes. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Amen. What was the key word there? Grieve. Grieve. Don't grieve. 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 Now, what, what, is, what is grief, or what is, what is the action of grieving? To cause sadness to someone else, to uh, yeah, create feet. sorrow in someone else's heart. I grieve them. And who's the one who can be grieved in this case? The Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now, have we ever thought much about God, whether it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit? Have we ever thought about God grieving? Mm. Because yes. we, we think about God often in a very positive, happy form. But in this case, we have here Joshua. Yes, um, absolutely. We can definitely grieve the Holy Spirit and grieve God all the same. Uh, there's one verse in particularly that sticks out more than any in the Bible in relation to exactly this. It's found in Revelation chapter 14. If we could go there. Sure. We'll add that verse right in. Yeah. You can go there and... Uh, you can tell us the verse and then uh, give us a minute to find it. Sure. It's Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. And we're looking at this idea of the Holy Spirit of God grieving, sorry, yes. Yes. feeling sorrowful. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. When I read this, I think about the fact that the Spirit has our best interest in mind, and the decisions and the choices that we make in this life 
not only affects, you know, Jesus, who we've seen throughout, you know, God the Father, who, we, who we've seen throughout, but also, also the spirit who God puts within us in order to do good works is the one who also says, you know, choose the right way. And our works do follow us. Now we've seen all these aspects of the Holy Spirit as a personal being, divine but also personal. And why is it important that we understand the Holy Spirit as a divine person instead of just a divine force? Why, what, what does this mean to us? Uh, Gloria, you had something you wanted to share. I mean, to me, the distinction between um, understanding that the Holy Spirit is a divine person instead of a force is that now I can relate to the Holy Spirit. I know that the Holy Spirit is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we just talk with, okay, the Holy Spirit cannot understand me. They don't know what I'm going to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we translate that to God and Jesus. But then if you understand that the Holy Spirit is a divine person, mm -hmm. then you know that they're working towards the goal of salvation, but they understand who you are as a person too. Yes. Kyle. Yeah, I just want to add to that. That's a great point. Um, Sometimes when, when, and I, I don't want to say anything about any particular Christian group, but some, t some people seem to think that they can manipulate yes. the Holy Spirit to do what they want. And really, um, if, a, if the Spirit is just a force, mm -hmm. then I can kind of maybe control this force or make it kind of, I don't know, get this feeling or this experience. But the Holy Spirit is so much deeper and more than that. The Holy Spirit being a person is someone that I yield my life to, something that works in me. And so, uh, and so it's very different from a force that I can kind of try to tap into or manipulate. The Holy Spirit is a personal, mm -hmm. a personal being that, uh, that I relate to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jason, not only, like Gloria said, can I have a relationship with, with a person, but I can also say thank you. Mm -hmm. I can say I love you, yeah. Holy Spirit. Um, Amen. I appreciate you. I don't know that we've done that very much, especially if you view the Holy Spirit as some kind of impersonal force of God. But, you know, when I, when I hear my, my child say, Jesus, I love you, you know, that brings joy to the heart of the Son of God, right, who came in humanity as yeah. Jesus of Nazareth. To say, Holy Spirit, I love you. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for bringing conviction to me when I mm. was in prison. Mm. Or thank you for bringing yes. conviction to me when, when I was in a terrible argument with my spouse. I, I just think it, it, it just opens up a whole new depth of relationship Amen. when I recognize he's a divine person. Amen. Amen. Jamie, very quickly, and then we'll move on. Oh, I was actually, Derek covered it. I was just going to emphasize the fact that if the Holy Spirit is a being, then that is someone we can have a relationship with, um, someone we can trust, someone we can speak to and guide us and spend time with. Yeah, amen. Now, there's so much biblical evidence here, and yet some people still have a hard time accepting the Holy Spirit as a divine person. Uh, why might this be? Is it maybe we just don't have that relationship? Alex, you had a thought on that? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we think of God as, as some sort of, of tangible force that's out there that, you know, we've pictured, you know, since the beginning of time. Uh, Jesus, we have a more personal feeling of him because he was on earth and he, you know, walked and talked with people, so in our minds and people's minds, we, we get that picture. Um, but the Holy Ghost, we don't have, you know, we weren't raised, most of us weren't raised with that, you know, picture of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit being such an active force in our lives and, and so much of a personal being. So I think it's hard for a lot of people to, to grasp that. So that. some of the ways we're raised, some of our understandings, maybe we need to really go back to the Word yeah. and Amen. see what, does the, what do the Scriptures actually describe yeah. the Holy Spirit as. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to another important uh, idea of who the Holy Spirit is. And we're going to go back to the words of Jesus, to the book of John. John chapter 16, verse 13 and Jamie, if you want to read that for us, um, and we're looking particularly at the first part here. You can read the whole verse, John chapter 16, verse 13, but listen to the first part here about how uh, Jesus describes the Comforter, the Helper, the Holy Spirit. Well, the New Living Translation says, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but will tell you what He has heard. He will let, tell you about the future. Spirit of what word do we have there? Truth. 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 All right. So when I think of truth, I, I, I can go back. I think of 
you know, when you're in fifth grade and you have this exam and you've got those true and false <laughs> questions. So you've got a 50% <laughs> chance either way. It's true or it's false, back and forth. But is that really what Jesus is saying here, that this is simply just a checklist, true and false? Is that what the Holy Spirit is? No. Adrian. And if we think about it, Jesus is, is the one speaking here. He's already identified himself as the way, the truth, and That's the right. life. That's right. So to reference back to the fact that the Holy Spirit is always pointing us back to Jesus and all that is true about him and about God. Mm. Trisha Lee. And to build on Adrian's point, there is a great controversy going on. There's a battle between good and evil, and uh, we've been told through Scripture that the devil is the father of lies, and there's no truth in him. And so, since the very beginning, the, the enemy has been trying to plant lies and error throughout the universe to distract us away from who God truly is, what he's like, and to tell us that he cannot be trusted. And so the ministry of the Son and the Holy Spirit are to bring us back to the truth that God can be trusted and that every other lie out there are things that we should not be paying attention to. And those lies manifest themselves in many ways. It's not just in the spiritual things that we study through theology and doctrines, but also in the individual choices we make in our life that could potentially lead us away from knowing God in the way that we should. And so I think the Holy Spirit helps us not just in spiritual things. The Holy Spirit wants to help us in our practical everyday lives being healthy so we can actually have a relationship with God and be prosperous and those types of things. But I think that when he says all truth, he really means all of it because everything bad that happens in this world, every single error has its source in Satan. And it's from that moment that the Spirit and the Son have been working to get us back to that truth. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus is speaking here, perhaps he could even be speaking on the character of God. And uh, Trisha Lee made a reference to the great controversy, the battle about the identity of who God is, his character, and whether he's a God of love or something else. And we're seeing here these verses through the Holy Spirit uh, we can better understand God and his character, and particularly the personality and the personal being of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, Adrian and some others made a reference to uh, John chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. So we, already, we, we, uh, we can see there that we get to uh, understand God and understand the character through the Son. Let's look at one other verse in Philippians. Philippians chapter 1 verse 19 and uh eric if you could read this for us philippians chapter 1 verse 19 we're looking here about the spirit of truth and revealing god what does this verse say uh philippians chapter 1 verse 19 new king james version and says for i know that this will turn out for my deliverance through the through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ all right so the supply of who there the spirit. spirit of, spirit Jesus, of Jesus, Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ. So we have this, that's another reference to how the spirit and Jesus Christ, we're going back to that, you know, that unity, that unity, that relational unity. You have it right there. And what are they doing in this case? This is praying to them uh, to help them, uh, Paul in this case, in various struggles they're going through. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that the spirit of truth has a particular special ministry. And so let's go back to the book of John and let's see what this special ministry is. John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. And uh, Joshua, if you could read that for us, we want to see more about this special ministry of the Holy Spirit, this spirit of truth. What is the purpose? What does this spirit of truth do as a being? What, what is its role and purpose? Sure. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things the, that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So, what is the ministry of the Spirit of Truth? To glorify, glorify Jesus. Jesus. Glorify yeah. Jesus, yes. And, uh, and, and how else is he doing that? How is he uh, doing that in relationship to us? How is he guiding us in some of those early verses? Mm -hmm. Guiding us into truth. truth. Guiding us into all truth. So, by guiding us to Jesus... 
he guides us in the truth. Nicole, yes. Well, I was just going to say that I think the word guide is very interesting because when you go to, when you visit another country and you want to go on a tour, you go with a guide usually to show you where you're going. You trust that person. So I think it's it's important for us to realize, well, you hope that you trust them. Yes. I think it's important that he used the word guide because guide for me means trust. Yeah. And so trust the spirit that he's going to take you to where Amen. you need to be and Amen. follow the truth that God has set before Amen. you. So I just something practical to think about. Yeah, great example. And we're going to go back and we're going to sort of magnify this point. There's another verse, John chapter 15, verse 26, going back to the chapter just before there. And uh, Alex, if you could read that for us, John chapter 15, verse 26, we have this concept of guide. And what else is this, uh, this spirit doing? Okay, I'll be reading from the King James Version. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which shall proceedeth or which proceedeth from the father he shall testify of me so we go back what's that word again oh, testify. Testify. testify so he's our guide he's testifying what is he testifying to through me. Jesus. Jesus. jesus to jesus and to the plan which is to save us mm-hmm. you know and again i come back to that beautiful word the love of the holy spirit i think that's a breakthrough for me in this study jason the holy spirit loves us Amen. and he loves us so much he's working just in a synchronized way with God the Son and with God the Father for the salvation of, of, of all of their creation. Amen. And now uh, we've looked through the lesson. And I think it's time for us to go back and think and reflect a little bit. We talked about how some people, uh, they have a little bit of a less than clear conception on who the Holy Spirit is. And they have this understanding that maybe he's not really being, but he's an impersonal force. What are some of the problems? What are some of the dangers that come if you have this concept of the Holy Spirit? Eric? I, uh, I think I'll go back to what um, he said, that um, when you think of him as an impersonal, as an impersonal being, a person, um, it means that we, are, we, 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 we can uh, put ourselves in a, in a mindset where we can think of as someone who we can manipulate, something, a force that we can manipulate, something that we can use to our own advantage as opposed to how, you know, letting him guide us to the Father. Yeah, I think that's, uh, unfortunately, we, we see that, like Kyle said earlier, that, uh, that people, this is a story in the book of Acts of a man who wants to buy the power. Yes, true. Yes. And, 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 and Peter says, let your go- silver perish with you. Right. You know, <laughs> what an offense. This is not power that can be used and manipulated. This is, this is a member of, of the Godhead wanting a relationship, Amen. Amen. wanting to save us. Amen. Simiso. I think the biggest uh, shortcoming with that is if it's an impersonal force, then you cannot grieve an impersonal mm. force. And then many times you have the tendency of not getting that conviction because mm. you just feel as if this is just an inanimate force. And yet it's something, it's, 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 it's a personal being. So they all have a level of feelings. Jesus wept when God created. At some point he regretted creating. And then the Holy Spirit can be grieved. So they all have an element of. Mm-hmm. So this relational language shows us that God is very emotional. And we don't really understand God unless we recognize that God, including the Holy Spirit, are relational beings and that we can relate to them. And uh, if I, this is a chance, if you feel convicted, uh, people have been led different ways by the Holy Spirit. And I know some of us here, we've experienced the Holy Spirit in a way that changed our lives when we had a personal relationship. And so if any of you has a testimony that you want to share about how the Holy Spirit has changed your life as you've understood uh, more uh, his personality, Trisha Lee? I was just going to make a comment on the first question, um, right. but I'll say it quickly. I don't want to take up any testimony time. But I do think the danger is to the question you just asked. If we believe the Holy Spirit is just an impersonal force and not a being that we can relate with, then we can have, fall into the danger of focusing more on the gifts and the miracles and the physical manifestation of his power as opposed to the real miracle of a changed heart and a changed life. 
And if we're focusing on seeking the gifts of tongues and this and prophecy and this, and we're, we don't have, we have, we lack love, then we're just sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. And I think the real miracle and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we need to be seeking is him convicting us of sin and changing our hearts to be more like Christ, which means we're being more like the father, which means we're being, you know, brought into that relationship with him. And so I think that's a real danger if we don't realize that he's a being trying to change our hearts. Cal, you have a comment or a testimony? Um, yeah, I just wanted to give a brief testimony. Go um, ahead. Very brief. Sure. But, you know, um, I think all of us all of us have struggled with sin at different points in our life. And um, I've definitely struggled with sins in my life. Um, you know, even even as a pastor, I've struggled. And I will just say that, you know, I think that the Holy Spirit working in our hearts. And, and, and we talked in a previous lesson about recreating. Um, you know, Psalm 51 says, create in me. A clean heart, O oh God, take not your Holy Spirit from me. That verse is very special to me because the Holy Spirit, as in the same way as he helped create the world, he can recreate in me a new heart Amen. and give me a new life. And um, it's only by his grace. And so um, that's just, that's my testimony is that God has, and is, and is still working in my heart, I know, to recreate every day so that I will be close to him and be more like the Lord. But, Amen. And so may that be our prayer, Amen. that he will create in us a new heart. And very quickly, we have one last verse to look at. How do we get the Holy Spirit? Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Stephanie, it looks like you're getting there. So please read for us Luke chapter 11, verse 13. How do we get the Holy Spirit? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So what's the word? What must we do to get the Holy Spirit? Ask. There we go. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. And, and ask not as in getting to control, but, but ask to have a relationship. Amen. The divine being who can change our hearts. Thank you for that testimony. Thank you for being with us for Hope Sabbath School. What an amazing journey. Our time went quickly in our study today. But crucial topic, not only the personality of the Holy Spirit, but that this divine being, along with the Father and the Son, loves you and wants a life-changing relationship with you. Let's pray that we can have hearts to be open to receive him today. Father in heaven, thank you that you love the world so much. You sent your son and thank you that you also sent the spirit to bring conviction, to draw us to Jesus, to change our hearts. Yes, and also to reveal the fullness of your love. Thank you for your word, which gives us truth in the midst of a world full of error and deception. May we hear the truth and be changed I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. Perhaps you never imagined what a life-changing study it would be as we look at the Holy Spirit and how we can have a life-changing relationship with Him. Take the lessons you've learned. Don't keep them to yourself. Go out and make a difference in the lives of those around you.